Hello and welcome back um, to our continued conversation on news and media literacy, helping students become critical consumers and creators of news and media. And today we are continuing the conversation that we started with Jonathan yesterday around um, fair use, the four factors of fair use, um, and that we're going to dive into common sense media education's lesson plans for grade seven on this topic. So um, let's dive in. I'm going to head right over to the Common Sense Media Education web page. And when you are logged in, you will see all of these options. We're going to go right to digital citizenship and the lesson plans, because that's where we're going to find all of the great lesson plans that Common Sense Media Education has put together um, for educators around digital citizenship. You'll see again, if you um, were with us last week, the six pillars of digital citizenship. So there are a couple entry points into the lesson plans from this page. Um, you can go to news and media literacy, which will filter those, filter the other five pillars out just leave me behind the news and media literacy lesson plans. And then you can find the grade level that you want to work within and go from there. You can also filter by grade. So if I filter by grade seven today and apply that, it's going to give me all of the digital citizenship lesson plans for grade seven. Or um, you can scroll through and kind of browse through what's being offered by grade levels. So you'll see they've got great offerings for all grade levels. I'm going to move right on down to grade seven because that is what we are going to talk about today. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see those six pillars identified um, and choose the one that you want to work with. So today we're looking for news and media literacy and the lesson is on the four factors of fair use. So when I click into this, again, their lesson plans are all set up um, in the same way. So once you get used to the format that they use, every time you go to a lesson plan, it'll just get easier and easier to navigate your way through it. <clears throat> this one has the title, the four factors of fair use, and an essential question. So the essential question um, is, what rights to fair use do you have as a creator? And as Jonathan and I talked about um, in his session yesterday, as we are moving our students um, from content consumers to content creators, these conversations about fair use become very important um, and very timely in our work. And we talked about you know, introducing these topics, especially around fair use, as the students need them. Um, maybe not all in one day in an isolated lesson, maybe chunking them out a little bit. And that's why I love today's lesson for the seventh grade, because I think there are some spots where you can chunk it out um, and maybe cover some shorter bite-sized pieces um, as students need them or you can decide to teach a full 50 minute lesson on the four factors of fair use and then dive into your content creation, maybe in your next class period. So like the um, lesson plan that we looked at for sixth grade last week, their highlighted media is here. It is a very quick mini lesson for students on creativity, copyright, and fair use. And I like it because it's directed right to the, your um, students at the seventh grade level, talking to them about the legal issues around creativity, copyright, and fair use, and also, also the ethical issues. And that's going to pop up in the lesson plan. Um, I love this lesson plan in particular because because I think that um, it's very real and there's some stuff in here that I think that your students will um, be able to dig into a little bit deeper. Um, so we've got our learning objectives here. We're going to be looking at copyright, public domain, and fair use. We're going to be identifying the purpose of the four factors of fair use. And then we're going to apply that to real world examples. And that's what I think is really fun about this lesson plan. I love the examples that they are giving us to use with our students. As um, I mentioned in the last session when I was going over the sixth grade lesson plan, um, <clears throat> excuse me, these lessons are scripted in a way that if someone came to you tonight and said, I need you to teach the four factors of fair use tomorrow, even if you didn't really know anything about that, um, they're scripted in a way that you could confidently enter into this lesson plan with your students. So that's, it's just another really incredible thing about Common Sense Media Education's lesson plans. I can look at the definitions of the terms that I'm going to be um, going over with my students. These are the terms that they will understand by the end of the lesson. And of course, 
These are aligned with Common Core ELA, CASEL standards, the AASL standards, and the ISTE standards. Um, so a lot of great ways um, to enter into these conversations with your students and also to teach and assess specific skills that you might already um, be doing or need to be doing in your course. So I'm going to go right on down to the lesson plan. You can see this lesson plan is set up to be done in 50 minutes. Your resources are here on the side. We've got our warm up about copyright and fair use. And just like our lesson plan had last week, um, the digital compass storyline, which again is a really fun um, gamified kind of video game version um, of a lesson around fair use there is that option for this lesson as well. So that might be something you want to assign your students as homework. So they're coming in and they've already heard some of these terms and they've played through this really fun scenario um, in a video game. There's also a digital compass educator guide if you want to know more about that. And I highly suggest that you check it out because um, I just think the digital compass is really a lot of fun. Um, this lesson does contain videos hosted on YouTube. So if your district um, has YouTube locked down, you will need to get that unlocked in order to to see these videos, but it is well worth it. Again, I'm not going to go through um, the entire lesson plan, but you can see how scripted it is. It gives you your exact talking points. It gives you your exact handouts and the moments to use them in the lesson plan. Um, if I were teaching this lesson, I would probably um, grab their slideshow, which I'm going to show you in a second, and pull out the pieces that had the script in it and put those in the speaker notes um, in the slideshow, and then I'm ready to teach that lesson. And again, like I said, if you don't know anything about it, it's you can still enter into this with confidence because of um, the package that they have put together for us. So we do have a 15 minute warm up that does not include the digital compass um, game. It includes this lesson. So those are two separate things, just if you're thinking about time. Um, and then we're going to look at, and we're going to look at this together today, um, the fair and square, which I love. I think it's a completely accessible way for students to understand the four factors of fair use and how to analyze for them. And while this lesson is geared toward the seventh grade, um, I teach juniors and I can see taking parts of this lesson, including that um, fair and square lesson that I'm going to show you um, and using it with my juniors because it's just really accessible. It doesn't talk down to the students. And then it gets applied to real world examples that I think are really great. And so you can see some of the examples here um, that you would talk about as you were teaching this lesson around um, Marvel's comic superhero Black Panther. Um, writing a research paper, which is something your students encounter, creating a video for a school project, and then copying the still image from a movie and then making it into a meme. So these are some of the real world examples um, that you would start talking about at the beginning of the lesson. Again, I'm not going to go through this entire script, um, but I am going to show you some um, of these slides because I think these slides in this lesson are really great. So We've got our essential question again, what rights to fair use do you have as a creator? So everything that we do with our students in this lesson um, is going to be working toward answering that question, which I think is um, really important. And so they've got this kind of, um, kind of catchy phrase that I like. So deter to determine fair use, you would ask yourself, is it fair and square? And I think that's a really great way to remember it. And of course, there's a script to go along with this lesson, but you are talking to your students about the four factors of fair use and how to analyze for them. So we're looking at the purpose of what you're doing with the um, resource that you might want to use, the nature of um, what you want to create, the effect that that's going to have on the original creator, and then the amount, how much of it you're using. And so, of course, you've got this scripted out for you here. This is a great um, handout potentially for students to reference. There, there are also handouts that you can print for them. And I'm going to show you um, a couple of ways that I use this um, later. And <clears throat> give students some examples um, that fit within this fair and square. So it's more likely to be fair use if the amount that you're using is just a small portion, or as Jonathan explained in his video yesterday, it does not include the heart of the work. Um, the purpose being educational or the original work being transformed into something that's very different from the original. 
the nature of the work is nonfiction or based on fact rather than someone's creative endeavor. And then the effect of the new work doesn't include a negative impact on the creator um, of the original work. And Jonathan spoke about the Nike and Beatles example um, in his video yesterday. Um, so you can imagine um, the effect of that on <laughs> the Beatles and on Nike in that court case and how that played out as he explained it to us, which I thought was really great. So um, I did mention there are some really great real world examples. So after you and your students have talked about the fair and square um, and they have an understanding of that, they have set up this activity so that you are working with a group to decide whether or not you think this, um, the examples that we're going to go through together um, is fair use or not. And it says for each example, the authors did not get permission to use the copyrighted works, which is something that um, the video mini lesson will have uh, explained to the students. And then basically what happens is you're going to put up a slide with a scenario on it. The group will get one minute to decide and discuss. They'll give a thumbs up if they think it is fair use and a thumbs down if they think it is not fair use. So the first example is Maya is making a flyer for her pet sitting business to post on her social media account. She finds a cool pet store logo and uses part of it in the flyer. And then, of course, your small groups get a minute to discuss this. I love that because it's kind of like um, a speed debate, which is super fun. And then the team would give you the thumbs up or thumbs down. A group of students are making a video for their class, remembering all they've done throughout the year. They use the song Good Riddance Time of Your Life um, by Green Day in the background. And it, that kind of makes me laugh because that was the song we used at our my high school graduation. Um, so again, they would have one minute to discuss this. Thumbs up or thumbs down if it's fair use. Eva takes an image of a famous magazine cover of a celebrity model, but she changes the headlines on the cover. She does this to criticize how magazine pressures girls to look perfect. And these are examples, of course, you would have built up to in your lesson through discussions. This students would probably recognize um, this one in particular because one of the one of the pieces of the script kind of goes into this kind of um, idea. So again, one minute to discuss. And then they've got their final example. Darren uses Photoshop to create a new version of the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci, which is image A. And then he uses this image on his website where he sells other photos that he's created. And that's image B. So is Darren within the rights of fair use? I think this is a great little lesson on its own. It would not take 50 minutes. This would take 25 minutes or so. Um, and then maybe another day you could um, do this next piece, which I'm going to show you, which I really love. Um, I actually built <clears throat> this particular lesson out on Flipgrid because I like to incorporate technology um, to help my students create things um, and, and interact with each other in, in other ways. Um, also, I need to assess speaking and listening skills, and I use Flipgrid a lot to do that. Um, it gives us a little break from always assessing speaking and listening in a presentation or in a graded discussion sort of setting. So Flipgrid is another way to do that. So I can pull in some other of those common core standards that I need to assess in my course and line them up with the Common Core standards that I'm already teaching and assessing from Common Sense Media Education. So I built this Flipgrid topic out for my students. This is part of the lesson from Common Sense Media Education. In fact, it's it comes up next in the slideshow. So instead of doing it um, through the slideshow, I'm going to do it through Flipgrid. So Maybe I enter into class the next day and we talk about, hey, remember the lesson yesterday? Let's talk about sampling today. Um, and in the slideshow, you've got this information that I pulled into a Flipgrid. So we're going to look at an example of sampling to see whether we think it qualifies as fair use. Watch the attached video, DJ Earworms Mash Up that is called Turning It Up. This song references top hits from 2020. DJ Earworm does not sell these mashups, but he does perform as a DJ. And so I'm asking my students, as you watch the video, complete the fair and square handout. Analyze whether or not DJ Earworm's Turning It Up mashup follows under fair use. 
And that is back in the lesson plan in your resources. And so you've got your fair and square handout in the teacher version. I'm just gonna open the teacher version um, so that you can see that the answers um, are there to help guide you. Again, as Jonathan explained um, in his video, this, you know, this isn't a, always a super clear cut. Um, so it's nice to, to have some guidance in terms of where student discussions might go. But again, there's not necessarily a hard and fast right answer. So this is the handout. Um, use the graphic to analyze whether or not DJ Earworms turning it up mashup follows under fair use. And so you get the um, square that students were introduced to earlier in the lesson, and they are going to put in specific examples from his mashup for amount, purpose, nature, and effect. And you can see, you know, this teacher version says an answer might be, oh, he just uses a small amount of each song, but he relies on certain samples over and over for the song's composition. And so they're doing that kind of analysis around the square as they listen. Um, and then the synthesis question is, okay, so looking at your evidence and the square, does this mashup qualify as fair use? Why or why not? And then a potential student example. Again, I'm just putting that here over into Flipgrid. So I've got the fair and square handout and that fair and square slide from er earlier in the lesson with all of the analysis questions on it so that students can see that. So after they watch the video, I'm asking the students to record a video that answers that question. Does this mashup qualify as fair use? Why or why not? And I ask my students to please use specific evidence from your handout in the video, in your answer. And then when they're done with that, because I want them to enter into a conversation with each other via Flipgrid, I want them to respond to at least three of their peers' videos, and I want them to respond and talk about whether or not they agree or disagree with their peers' evaluations, because like Jonathan said, sometimes it's kind of a gray area. So um, that's what's really fun about this topic, is that students can debate whether or not it's fair use. They can add on to each other's um, supports for or against. Um, and of course, they, I want them to talk about why. So that is how I would use the tool Flipgrid um, to add some technology to have my students interacting with each other in a, in a different way. Of course, this is perfect to be done in the classroom when we're all in person. This could be done as homework if that's something that your students would engage in, um, or even asynchronous learning. The other piece um, that I want to point out to you, because I think it's really lovely what they have put together for educators, is that there are take-home resources. So you can um, share these resources out maybe in a classroom newsletter or in an email or send it home with the students <laughs> for their parents. May get there, might not. Maybe you have a class website. You could post um post this information um, too, but I think this is a really positive way to engage students or to engage parents um, in what's going on in your classroom and in the very similar way that they give teachers a script to talk to their students with. They also do um, that for families, which I think is really important. Of course, we've got the English and the Spanish version. So when you open this up, um, you have, again, it's it's a script. I just, I can really see families potentially using this around the dinner table to talk about um, the, you know, the topic of news and media literacy. This helps parents in the same way of, like I said, um, that it helps educators because these conversations uh, might be tricky. And um, we've also got some family tips and then family engagement resources. So if a family contacts you, or maybe you just send it out as a, a link in an email, like I said, or a newsletter, um, or post it on your class website, there's a whole family toolkit here to really help your families engage with their, with their children around these conversations that we know are so important. So there's a family media agreement that can be done, text messaging tip, tips and then digital citizenship resources. They've also curated articles and videos for families, workshops for families to attend, um, to learn more about this really important topic. And of course, um, if you are not a Common Sense Media educator, you might um, just know Common Sense Media because they've got book lists and video lists and video game lists and website lists. Um, 
where they give ratings that um, are really helpful for parents as well. So that is the lesson for the seventh grade on the four factors of fair use and maybe a couple of different ways to break it up or mix it up with uh, Flipgrid. If you have any questions about how we might go about teaching this lesson or you want to talk more about teaching this lesson and this topic, please do reach out um, to us. We look forward to continuing this conversation next week. Thank you for joining me.